I've, I've got a very dear friend of mine. In fact, I'll never forget the first time I met Ali Khalil. Uh, it was actually um, uh, it was before we actually talked about uh, the company he owns or part owner in, and called uh, Wow Green. But uh, I, I, I'm gonna first. I want to introduce Ali Khalil to everybody. Ali, are you on the line right now? Hey Jim, yeah, I'm here. Thanks okay, for having you? me. Uh, no problem, man. I want to give everybody a little background about Ollie. Ollie's a young man. You can see, he's, and I was telling just before the call, I said, darn, we're going to have the picture of you on there, and all the girls are going to be going wild over him. But look, he is a handsome young man. He's not only uh, a young man, but he's, he's sharp. He's a business owner. He's on several businesses. He continues to own several businesses right now. He's a co-founder with Wild Green. He's a leader in the MLM industry. Uh, he's a servant. And this is really one of the reasons I, I asked him if he'd be on this call is not really just because he's the founder of Wild Green, but because of his experience in, in field leadership, in working not just at a corporate level with employees, but also working in the field with, with entrepreneurs. Because, you know, in, in every business you need somebody who's a cheerleader, somebody who can encourage, somebody who can really build and edify other people. And either Ollie was born with it naturally, or he developed the skills along the way. But either way, he is a master at this. And I think that um, when I say, when I introduce him as, you know, certainly a man that I trust and admire and respect, I really mean that. And that's why I really wanted him on this call. And, uh, Ollie, you know, what I'd like to start off with right now, is we don't need to go back in, you know, in your entire history and all the different businesses you've owned, but, you know, you've been an entrepreneur for quite some time. Um, would you just address what drives you or what drove you at first to become an entrepreneur? And then we're going to lead into um, – why Wild Green, but we're not going to stay on Wild Green. That's not the reason for this call tonight. So go ahead, Ollie. Please take it away. Thanks, Jim. You know, thank you so much for having me on this call. You know, it's truly a blessing to, to have met you. And, and Stephen, thank you for moderating and, and taking care of everything that you do. It's truly an honor to be on this and, and share some things with everybody. You know, Jim, it's, that's a great question. And it's really weird. You know, one of the things that I've learned in life is that if you truly want to make a difference, in anything that you do, you have to do things a little different, and, and and you really have to be part of something different. And at a young age, you know, when I was 12 years old, I remember we grew up, uh, we were poverty-stricken neighborhood. I mean, the dream job for the uh, for the people in my neighborhood, my old friends, was to be able to get a job in one of the big three. I'm from Michigan, so to be able to get a job in the factory working in maybe Ford, GM, or Chrysler was like the dream job that everybody would talk about at a young age because that's what their parents did. And, you know, my dad worked for Ford for 10 years, and, you know, I, I really, I just, I've been a dreamer my whole life, and I've always wanted to succeed, and I always wanted to do bigger things. And, you know, I, I always told myself, I, I just have to be around that type of people. So I really didn't know how I was going to do that. Well, uh, I got a job when I was about 13 years old in the gas station industry, and uh, you know I loved it. I was sweeping floors and, and mopping and filling coolers and pumping gas for a quarter for people, but all the time learning and being around vendors and, and different salespeople and listening and other successful people, and I always told myself, you know, if I could just be around different successful people and, and millionaires, maybe I could one day just get the crumbs of a millionaire and maybe have their success trickle down to me both financially, spiritually, and just from business experience. And I always said, I just got to be around those type of people. And I remember thinking uh, when I was working and going to school, I said, wow, if I could just own one gas station, I'd be the luckiest guy in the world. I, I'd you know, I'd be my own boss. I, I'd be the the guy that pays the employees, that makes the decisions, and and just it, it'd be amazing. Never in my wildest dreams did I think by the age of 25 years old I'd have 11 locations for Exxon Mobil, be a multi-millionaire in that industry, and you know it all started with my first location at 17 that I got only through relationships, through, through help and support of my family, friends, other people that I have met that offered me lines of credit and, and trusted me. And, and, you know, it's just been, it's been a total blessing my entire life to be around the right people. And, you know, Jim, I, I appreciate everything you say about me, but I, I'm truly, you know, I'm nothing special. You know, I'm not, I'm not that smart. I, I don't really have anything extraordinary about me. And everything I've done and everything I've become, I've been a product of everyone else around me. 
and, and that's that's been the most important thing in my life is surrounding yourself with the right people you know I've learned that you really are the average of the five people you hang out with if I would have stayed hanging out with those people that had the dream job of one day working in the factory who now some of those same people are being laid off you know I probably would have ended up being there but instead I decided that I wanted to dream bigger and be around different people and you know today it's where I find myself at the age of 32 years old being around unbelievable business geniuses and masterminds like Ali Mallet who is the founder and CEO of Wild Green and Jordan Zimmerman who's a multi billionaire who's the founder of Zimmerman Advertising and and so many other people that are just unbelievably successful that I've allowed myself to be around and just learn as much as I can in talking about getting the crumbs of millionaires you know now I find myself still wanting to learn and, and getting the crumbs of people who have made hundreds of millions and even billions and hoping some of that really trickles down to me and, and the best part about that Jim is the more success you have the more you can go out there and really bless other people and it's it's just that that effect where you help more people the more success you have the more success you can help other people have and it's it's just a great blessing and I'm so honored and I feel so blessed to be part of everything that we're doing you know um, here's something that I find really interesting in, in the world in general you know usually you find people young or old, it really doesn't matter, that have achieved some sort of level of success in their life. And oftentimes it, it goes to their head. And I, I want to share um, the story and how I first met you, which really was not um, the connection to Wild Green, which is kind of interesting. And I think you'll agree with me on this. Um, you know, I was, because I own a company called Successful Thinkers, and I went over to um, uh, Michigan to support an event that was taking place over there. And you wanted to, to, to meet me. You drove over to the event as well. And... Um, and I saw, you know, I saw you. I mean, I, I met a very young, handsome young man who was obviously he knew, knew what he was doing, had his act together. You could tell by the way you, you postured yourself and everything. But there was a side of you that was rather impressive, and it's the side that, that um, I'm personally drawn to, and that's your servant side. Um, and the point I'm, I'm trying to make here is that, you know, I see a lot of people achieve success, both whether it's in this industry here in network marketing or it's in your typical business. And there's a certain arrogance or a certain, um, well, you, you know, life owes me now or something like that. You know, I achieved my dream. I'm, I'm where I need to be. And now everybody needs to, you know, bow before me. And you are definitely 100%, 180 degrees opposite of that. What causes you to stay in that servant mode? You know, Jim, that's a great question, man. It, it just, it always seems, I know it sounds, it sounds strange and, and for me, I didn't totally get it at first, but, you know, people always, life is funny. People always think that in order to serve their own best self-interest that, you know, they have to have this attitude of what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine and I got to try to get everything I could possibly get. And, you know, I've just noticed and I was really fortunate to be able to pick up on this that it's in my own best self-interest to help other people achieve their dreams and to win because it creates a bond that is unbreakable. People, when they really know you care, they'll do anything for you. I mean, my good friend Grayson Marshall, he always says, uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And, and you know, that's just so true. And really, it's just seeing it happen in my own life where the more I give, it seems like the more I receive and, and, and you know, when you truly help somebody, Jim, and you really help them win and, and just feel better about themselves or gain anything, I mean, listen, that's heavyweight stuff. You can't buy that that feeling with money. It's just, it's the greatest feeling in the world. And, you know, that's why I love this industry, Jim. I mean, it, at the age of 22 years old, I got into this industry. I didn't know what I was doing. I was really ignorance on fire. I had no idea. Um, what was going on in network marketing all I know is my good friend calls me from California and says Ali oh my god this new business it's the greatest thing you have to get in this company it's um it's got these products one it one helps you sleep better and one helps you lose weight and I told him I said I don't need either of those man I, I really don't know what you want what you're telling me this for he's like yeah but forget about that you get in and you get other people in and by the way it was seven hundred dollars to get into this company I didn't know any better so I, I got into this company 
for $700 and I bought uh, sleeping pills and, and uh, weight loss pills. I still have some in my garage probably. I never use the darn stuff. But the point is, in my first week, I went out there and, and I brought in 23 people for this $700 pack. And you know, the CEO calls me and he says, oh my God, you, you, you know, you've broken every record. How did you do this in your first week? You brought in uh, 23 people on our highest pack. I said, well, you know, I didn't know you had any other packs. To be honest with you, I just was doing what I was told to do. And, uh, you know, to make a long story short, that's really when um, I started to learn that being a servant is the best thing that you could be is from this industry because it's all about helping people, helping people, helping people, help them help people. And you learn so much through it. Now, the reason Monetium resonated so much with me when you first told me about it is that same company six months later that I built a awesome organization and went out of business and you know I didn't care about myself I cared about all these people that I brought in and my commitments and in and, and my promises that we were all gonna win together and it hurt so much to have so many people affected by what happened so when you first told me about Monotium Jim you know it, it just struck me man and I, and I I felt how emotionally connected you were to it and how, how much you loved it and you know I absolutely fell in love with the concept as well so well I think you you, you definitely hit on one of the things that's really important in in, in life and, and in business for sure and that's the fact that people care more about how much you care than how much you know and in this industry you know obviously it's 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 a faith-based industry and it's it's really about people it's not about a product and I know that you own a great company with a great product behind it, many great products actually, but the thing that has resonated of course with me is the fact that you actually do put people first.